I am Elizabeth Azukis from East Stroudsburg University of Pennsylvania, and I conducted this research in partnership with Michael Barber from Toro University in California. The title of this presentation is Teachers' Perceptions of K-12 Online Learning and Action Research Project. This study is a part of a five-year project to examine the effectiveness of curriculum for K-12 online learning that was being implemented as a part of a graduate level course for in-service teachers as one of five required courses um, for the state's educational technology teacher certification endorsement. And I should mention that this study was conducted prior to the pandemic and the implementation of widespread uh, remote learning. Uh, so the um, exposure that students had to virtual or online learning um, at this time would have been very different. However, the implications um, may be very important going forward as many um, colleges and universities are realizing that uh, both pre-service teachers um, and uh, teachers working on um, technology certifications or endorsements need more um, understanding of virtual or online learning. The research questions were, what are in-service teacher perceptions of K-12 online learning? And how do those um, perceptions then impact uh, future curricular design, since this is part of a cyclical process? The context in which um, the research took place, um, it was conducted at a large public research university in an urban area in a Midwestern state. As I mentioned, it took place in an online graduate level course. There were seven weeks of online content uh, that focused on uh, the teacher, uh, the designer, and the role of the facilitator. And the um, course was originally based on the following curricular materials, um, good practice to inform Iowa learning online case studies. Um, the teacher education goes into virtual schools curriculum um, from the Iowa State University, um, specifically um, scenarios designed to explore the role of the online local or on-site facilitator. Um, as well as local versions of case studies um, based on online teachers in this particular Midwestern state. And then with each cycle um, of curriculum implementation uh, based on the student perceptions of K-12 online learning, as well as their feedback about the course, um, changes were made to the curriculum to keep trying to improve it. The participants consisted of 16 learners enrolled in this particular course. Four of the learners agreed to allow their complete set of artifacts to be used as part of the formal data collection. Partial data was used from the other 12 students. This is the fourth cycle um, of research in this action research um, project. Um, year one and two, there, the course was offered in the winter, and then it was also offered in the summer of year two. And then this is the fourth cycle um, of the course that was offered in the winter of year three. Data collection consisted of learner reflections, uh, which they conducted in the form of blog posts, learner interactions, students were asked to comment on each other's blog posts, student uh, course projects, and course evaluations. Grounded theory was used to analyze the data, and we went through the three-step process of open, axial, and selective coding um, to develop um, our themes. There were four themes that emerged uh, from the data, and I will talk about each in uh, greater detail. The first uh, was that students identified the benefits and challenges of online learning. 
the students were focused on success factors for online learning, what has to um, be present in order for online learning to be successful. There was a greater learner acceptance of K-12 online learning, and students discussed their self-efficacy for teaching online. So for the benefits and challenges of online learning, um, the students talked about uh, positives such as enhanced equity and access. So they were really focused on um, the fact that smaller schools, uh, rural schools may not have access to high level courses or unique electives and that online learning might be um, a way of bringing those courses to them or bringing those students to the courses. Uh, they saw another possible benefit as flexibility um, and this um, might mean uh, allowing students to take a course at their own pace. Um, it might mean offering students flexibility in terms of, um, let's say that they were a very competitive athlete, and in order to participate in those athletic programs, they had to travel all over um, the nation to be able to do that. Um, they saw online learning as allowing that level of flexibility um, for the student while still being able to get their education. Uh, they also saw another benefit of online learning as enhanced communication, uh, primarily between the student and the teacher. Um, and one of the students um, stated in referring to the benefits, many students have very little and in some cases no access to advanced placement courses. By offering courses online, we open up the availability of a strong education to more students. Is that not our goal in a democratic education system? Equal educational opportunities. Um, so it's just an example um, of how they were talking about the benefits. They did, however, also raise uh, some challenges um, that they perceived with online learning. Um, one of those was the potential lack of social interaction, primarily among students, peer to peer. Uh, there was also some concern that if students were taking all of their coursework online, uh, that they may not be having normal social interactions that you would have in a face-to-face -face school and that that could be of concern. Um, one of the other challenges that was raised was the idea of career threat. Some of the students were concerned that online learning um, posed a potential threat to their career as teachers. Um, the idea that uh, online learning can serve uh, many students at once and therefore fewer teachers would be needed. Um, and so more online learning then would automatically mean uh, the need for fewer teachers. So they raised that as a concern. Uh, the other concern that was raised was specifically in relation to classroom management and discipline in the online environment. What kinds of unique uh, things would teachers have to know about or be concerned about, be aware of um, with regard to classroom management and discipline in the online environment? And then looking at um, the themes that emerged in the previous three cycles of um, data collection to compare how these themes compared with those. In year one, the students um, did also raise some concern about a lack of interaction or socialization among students taking online courses. Uh, there were some commonalities with year two as well. Um, students identified um, increased access and flexibility as a positive of online learning, but they also perceived a potential uh, challenge or area of concern um, in perceived isolation uh, among students. So there's that commonality there again. Um, and in year three, the students perceived um, that enhanced communication was a possible benefit with strong instructional design. They also mentioned discipline, although more tangentially um, than occurred in this particular uh, round of data. 
And that, that may be because of the specific nature of the case studies that were added um, in this particular cycle of data. Success factors for online learning. So the students talked about what needed to be present in order for online learning to be successful. Um, one of those was student support. Um, so do students have support in terms of a, um, an on-site facilitator? Do they have support in terms of a student uh, orientation? Is there good instructional design so that students um, know how to clearly navigate through the course? Um, those were the kinds of things that were brought up with relation to student support. Um, they also felt that parent uh, involvement was very important um, in online learning, especially in looking at the, the younger um, grade levels, and that it was very important um, for schools to specifically um, involve parents and make sure that there's a parent orientation and that parents understand how to support their students in their online courses. And then the third thing that was raised was academic integrity. Um, they really uh, were focused on the importance of maintaining academic integrity in the online environment um, in order for online learning to be able to be successful. Um, one of the students stated, my greatest fear of online courses is that the person taking a test may not be the person taking a course. Uh, maybe they can incorporate a webcam that records the user only during the test time. Uh, this might help, but I am sure someone would figure out a way to get around that too. Um, so I think we did see that during the, the pandemic um, that people were, were using um, video during testing to ensure that students uh, were the ones that were taking the test and that they were not accessing other information on their computers while they were doing so. Um, but this was definitely raised as something that um, online schools and online teachers need to be thinking about and that need to be specifically designing for. Um, in uh, the other cycles of data, uh, the importance of student support was also raised in year one um, by those students. Uh, this was not mentioned at all in year two. They did not, those students did not discuss success factors for online learning. Um, and in year three, um, the importance of student support was also um, emerged as a theme in that data, but it was specifically centered around the need for strong um, instructional design. Learner acceptance of K-12 online learning. So the, um, the learners demonstrated an increased acceptance of online learning um, as they participated in this course. Uh, for example, one of the students stated, since starting our very own online class, I have become more welcoming of the idea of online classes. It wasn't until I took the last two online courses through this Midwestern University that I started to see the real potential in online courses. I was still reserved about using them at the K-12 level, but most of that stems from my own misunderstandings. Um, so you could see the students' attitudes changing um, over um, their uh, time in the, this particular course, um, starting out more skeptical and moving into the area of increased acceptance. Um, in fact, a few of them were actually moving into the area of advocacy of online courses and arguing that more high school students needed to be made aware of opportunities for taking courses um, online so that they could really take advantage of those benefits, um, specifically the, the equity and access and flexibility. Uh, in year one, uh, the students were skeptical about online learning, uh, so there, there was um, some a commonality, uh, but they didn't move um, toward greater acceptance throughout their time in the course. Um, in year two, um, increased acceptance of online learning did not emerge as a theme in the data analysis. And then in year three, 
um, this was a commonality. Student um, acceptance of K-12 online learning did increase as a result of being in, um, in the course. And that may be happening because as students are expressing questions and concerns, those are being addressed by the course curriculum through the curriculum revision process. Finally, student self-efficacy for teaching online emerged as a theme. Uh, the student self-efficacy for facilitating an online course increased. Students felt somewhat less efficacious about being the teacher of the online course. Uh, for example, a student stated, I feel pretty confident in being able to support a student at my school through an online course. I think that I could engage the student to complete an online course successfully. I would have to have a lot of training and be mentored by an experienced online teacher to feel confident about teaching an online class. So it's interesting because you know, they're recognizing that there's a different uh, skill set for facilitating an online course versus being the teacher of record um, of the online course. Uh, this also did not emerge as a theme in year one, year two, or year three. Um, the students were not talking about their self-efficacy uh, for facilitating or teaching online courses. In terms of implications for future course design, the learners expressed a desire for a better understanding of how schools market themselves. And this was related to that advocacy piece. They um, were surprised that there was so much going on with online learning that they were not aware of. Um, and then they also wanted to know how students were being made aware of some of the benefits of online learning. And so one thing that could be done in the course to address this um, is to add samples of marketing materials from virtual schools or to have students perhaps do case studies of online schools where they go out and look at their website and how they're advertising and recruiting uh, students. The learners responded positively to reading about the implementation of online learning in the state. So it was recommended that additional updated readings um, highlighting online learning in that particular state continue to be added to the course. Um, case studies that demonstrate instructional design and teacher practices to reduce student anxiety in online courses could be added. Uh, the students uh, in several cycles had expressed uh, concern about the need for student support and so looking at um, how teachers reduce anxiety and support students in online courses um, may answer some of those questions. Uh, additional case studies could also be added that address some of the other concerns, such as classroom management and specifically academic integrity. Conclusions. Um, acceptance of online learning grew over the four-year period, with some students actually moving into that area of advocacy, um, probably because of updated readings and case studies. Um, there was a prompt that was added um, as a result of um, previous uh, data collection and analysis that addressed student anxiety and may have prompted more discussion about the site mentors, the parental involvement, um, and the need for high quality instructional design. As the depth of understanding of K-12 online learning develops, the learners or the students have more nuanced questions um, and concerns develop. Self-efficacy emerged as a theme for the very first time. Um, it does seem logical that students would be making connections between their course content and their ability to apply these learnings to their teaching lives. Um, maybe interesting to look at uh, more of the differences between facilitation and uh, the extra knowledge and skills that may be needed uh, for teaching the course, being instead of just being that supportive facilitator. Um, this information may be relevant for higher education institutions looking to add or continue um, online learning uh, post pandemic or to be able to support local school districts that um, are continuing to offer some courses online or may in the future have a need to offer remote learning again. Um, so the teachers are 
graduating from teacher preparation programs prepared to teach online um, if need be. So uh, that's in-service uh, perceptions of K-12 online learning um, and this particular cycle of the Action Research Project. Thank you very much.